Um, so AMPK, okay. uh, another exciting, uh, well, it's an, actually an enzyme uh, that Life Extension has been looking into. Um, it stands for adenosine monophosphate activated protein kinase. Okay. And I might argue it's one of the most important enzymes, cellular mm -hmm. enzymes. Uh, Life Extension calls it like the master regulator mm -hmm. of energy balance because once uh, AMPK is activated, it does regulate energy in the body. You're listening to the Nutrition World Podcast, a show about navigating the intricacies of holistic wellness. We're a natural health food store located in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and we believe that optimal health and peak performance should be accessible to everyone. Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. On today's episode, we have the pleasure of sitting down with Dr. Vanessa Pavey. She is an education scientist for life extension. She is a naturopathic doctor trained as a primary care physician, and she's skilled in medical biochem, phytonutrients, and nutrition with a talent for conveying complex physiological concepts in everyday language that we can understand. Ed and Dr. Pavey sit down to discuss the intricacies of anti-aging, and not just anti-aging in the sense of taking care of your body as you age, but really combating aging at a cellular level with some key nutrients that I was unfamiliar with. I had heard of them before, but didn't really know what they did or how they worked. So this episode was really, really great. We have a ton of information to cover as always, so let's go ahead and hop right into this conversation with Ed and Dr. Vanessa Pavey. I am stoked and fired up about this conversation on Nutrition World's podcast. One reason is in the old saying, uh, do you have a dog in the fight? I do have a dog in this fight because we're going to talk about aging and anti-aging. And being 65, I certainly um, realize I'm in the fourth quarter of my life. And I have pretty much focused a tremendous amount of my studies over the past about five years on what mechanisms can we actually bring into our life with choices that could potentially slow down aging. And aging truly is a disease, which I know you'll talk about. You've been on a, a couple other podcasts with me. You, we, you've always been very helpful. You are amazing with your experience being at Life Extension Foundation, one of my most trusted partners. And I just welcome you to this special podcast, Dr. Pavey. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me on. You know, um, I say sometimes the uh, that we uh, generally age not because we wear out, but far more b because we rust out. And I know, you know, we all have our sources of, of, uh, of uh, information, education that we trust. I, I really like, uh, li lately I've been listening to Dr. David Sinclair's podcast on, on anti-aging, but he had a, a really good analogy. He said, you know, 15 years ago, we didn't know anywhere near what we know now about what is really behind aging. We were actually mistaken about several concepts and theories. And he said, you know, you, when he looks at all these animal studies and you look at a regular mouse, regular mouse lives about two years. A mole mouse lives 20 years, yet they're cousins to each other. So when you see things like that in nature, I mean, I've always been intrigued about the why. Why does something happen? Well, because those two mice are very similar, but in not in lifespan. Why would we not look at the, mo the, the mole rat and see, okay, well, cellularly and nutritionally, why is this able to live 10 times longer? That's the whole concept of what I want us to get into today. What can we understand about the true mechanisms of aging? And then what can we do about it? Oh, what a great topic. And um, I really like the introduction. Uh, mm -hmm. And I love that analogy of that we we rust out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And looking at, you know, kind of these these pathways, cellular pathways of what contributes to the aging process. Because mm -hmm. right now what we're trying to do is kind of you know, look into studies that slow the aging process down. Mm -hmm. Haven't quite got to age reversal yet, but hopefully in the future, uh, that's what we're going to be seeing. Um, but there's a couple of different pathways um, of interest. Um, I'd like to talk about like the mTOR pathways. Mm -hmm. um, we can also talk about senescent cell burden. Um, I'd like to also talk about, oh, probably the hottest anti-aging uh, nutrient out there right now, NAD. 
Yes, yes, yes. yes. I'm excited <laughs> about that. Of course, I, t- I take all of the things that you've mentioned. And, um, you know, I just want to read here something that I, I just found interesting because I was doing a tiny bit of research. And uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, of course, long ago said this, and I'm going to have to disagree with her. She said, Today is the oldest you've ever been and the youngest you'll ever be again. Well, on a calendar, that's true. But I do not believe that we have to just settle for aging. We can do something about this presently that we could not do 10 to 20 and before years ago. And I think it's very uh, uh, disheartening that much of the medical community certainly doesn't have any of this conversation. They're not trained. It's not their fault. It's kind of a system that just is the system. But here we are to train. Here we are to learn. So let's talk about some of these concepts, because really when you boil it down to the the, the kind of the, the three or four buckets of aging, the mechanisms, the reasons, there's there, there's not really a hundred. There's really three or four main ones, maybe five. And those are the ones we focus on. So what can people learn about oh, this? Oh, absolutely. And I, I think there is a paradigm shift that's starting to happen, mm-hmm. because I think people are starting to think, you know what? I don't think... Aging is, you know, just inevitable. It's Mm -hmm. like the natural process of things. I think people are being more proactive saying, what can I do to make myself healthier? Mm -hmm. What can I do to, you know, chronologically going along, stay healthy? And uh, these really kind of interesting pathways. uh, Did you want to talk about maybe mTOR first? I love, you know, mTOR. It's a a crazy word, but I I actually, Dr. McCullough, I started reading about mTOR many years ago. I'm very fascinated by it. And it's a concept that I, we know is part of this real process. Process of aging. Absolutely. So it does stand for, well, I, it's in the literature in two different ways. Uh, the M would, uh, mammalian, mm-hmm. I've also seen it written as mechanistic, mm-hmm. um, and, uh, target of rapamycin, mm-hmm. TOR. So um, this is actually kind of simplistically uh, what it really is. It, it's an important molecule that actually regulates cell growth. So when we're, you know, in our you know childlike form, we actually need mTOR to grow into our an, our adult form. But once we're there, we don't necessarily need so much stimulation for growth. Mm-hmm. Um, and here's what may be of interest uh, to uh, your listeners is that you know when mTOR starts to get a little bit too overactive, mm-hmm. it can actually trigger weight gain, but fat weight gain. Um, Probably, people mm-hmm. are probably familiar with you know, as we age, it's a lot more difficult to lose that kind of body fat. Mm-hmm. And M- mTOR too much, like excessive mTOR could actually possibly be behind that. Um, now, on the flip side, we don't necessarily want too little mTOR either, because we do need to make sure like our, for example, like our stem cells are stimulated to replicate. Mm-hmm. So we do want to maintain our muscle mass, uh, our tissue density. But Mostly, if if we're looking at it like on a scale, most of us are a little bit heavier on the excess side than on the deficient Mm -hmm. mTOR side, uh, which can attribute to weight gain. And I know that uh, at least Dr. McCullough made a big deal of this. Too much protein can alter mTOR to a negative side. Now, I'm a big fan of of a decent amount of protein because I work out so hard. And I'm also uh, many of my, my platforms of information I really have seen a lot of people who don't eat enough protein. And as we age, I think that can be uh, a very crucial uh, mistake as we age. So it's all about balance again. Everything about nature is 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 not an exact science, but it's all about creating a synergy and a balance. And that's where we will win this race. And again, we're not going to stop aging. Uh, you know, we rent these bodies. They're going to wear out. But the thing is, and this is my, you know, sad observations, and I think it's most people's you know, I remember growing up being 15 and 25 and 35. It seems today that most people at 50-ish are like the other people used to be at 70-ish back when I grew up. Aging is accelerating for multiple reasons, and we can do something about it. So mTOR, what, like diet or nutritional-wise, what can we do about mTOR? Yes. So one of the ways that we can actually help to balance the scale, so we're not too mm-hmm. much this way, we're not too much that way, is actually... AMPK activation can help to balance, kind of mm-hmm. tip the scales back into neutral. Um, so AMPK, okay. uh, another exciting, uh, well, it's an, actually an enzyme uh, that Life Extension has been looking into. Um, it stands for adenosine monophosphate activated protein kinase. Okay, And I might argue it's one of the most important enzymes 
cellular mm-hmm. enzymes. Uh, Life Extension calls it like the master regulator mm-hmm. of energy balance because once uh, AMPK is activated, it does regulate energy in the body. Um, like, for example, supporting insulin sensitivity. Mm-hmm. Huge component, especially to fat gain. Um, what a lot of people may not know um, is that when we start gaining weight, when we kind of move into insulin resistance, it's actually insulin that's creating the problem. So Mm -hmm. just to kind of put it simplistically, you know, when we consume like a carbohydrate meal or we're eating a little bit of sugar, that sugar uh, gets through the digestive tract into the bloodstream, hits the pancreas, and then the pancreas secretes insulin. And insulin kind of finds its way to our, our tissues. And it acts like a key that unlocks the doors to the cells to open up the door so the sugar can get out of the blood and into the -hmm. the tissue for metabolism. But when we start moving into insulin resistance, what happens is the door doesn't open, even Mm -hmm. though insulin's right there trying to unlock that, you know, Mm -hmm. unlock the key, it, uh, the doors don't open. So one of, there's two pieces here. We want to look to see, well, why is the door not opening if insulin is there? Mm -hmm. And oftentimes it's because AMPK is not activated. Another aspect is if the sugar is still floating in the blood, that'll trigger the pancreas to secrete more insulin to try to force the doors open. And insulin is actually an anabolic hormone. It's not just a key. Mm -hmm. It actually tells the body to start storing fat, storing fat, store, 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 turning that sugar into fat. And that is what creates that weight gain Uh, Mm -hmm. effect. So the more insulin we have in circulation, the harder it's going to be to lose weight. So keeping that AMPK activated so we can get those doors open. And Mm -hmm. then the pancreas says, whoa, okay, there we go. We, uh, you know, we got that sugar out of the bloodstream. We did our job. We can shut down the insulin production for now. You know, I speak about insulin probably hundreds of times as far as the different platforms and even with many, many clients. And I think it is a key to aging gracefully and staying further disease free. And I really encourage people to do blood testing because I really find that when people have 10 and over on insulin, fasting insulin, they're going to have much more difficult time with many parts of the the chemistry from cholesterol to their weight gain to their blood sugar and everything. But how AMPK, it's, you, people can take this supplementally. Well, AMPA, because it's a the enzyme inside of our cells, what we want to do is take something to help activate it, to okay. kind of turn it on. Mm-hmm. And there's a couple different nutrients that have been studied to help do that. Uh, one is Gynostema pentaphyllum, okay. which is an herb. Uh, it also, you could probably find it um, listed as joagulin, which mm-hmm. is the common name. Um, it's, uh, it, it is uh, drank as a tea um, also, mm-hmm. uh, but very common in pill form. Um and the second nutrient that's been really well studied is called hesperidin. Uh, it's an orange fruit extract. Mm-hmm. Um, so both of those are great ways of supporting AMPK activation from like a nutritional perspective. Although probably the most like powerful way of activating AMPK is exercise. Ah, okay. Yes. Exercise uh, and also calorie restriction. Mm-hmm. But like for myself, it's very difficult to be consistent with exercise. And I do try to do intermittent fast, intermittent fasting, but it just, it's so difficult to maintain. So, you know, kind of for myself, you know, taking some nutrients, like, you know, some great herbal support, mm-hmm. like with Gynostema pentaphyllum and Hesperidin, that really is a little bit more convenient. Yes, yes, yes. And of course, <laughs> combining all together would be the ultimate. I know I take a product called AMP uh, Activator and it's uh, and, and we offer that. And I just, you know, that has, that has been around a long time, but the science keeps growing on this concept. So again, uh, AMP is... A very important part of the mechanism of aging. We can do it by intermittent fasting, which I certainly highly recommend, and or time restricted eating would be another word. If you can just eat in ten hour window, don't eat for fourteen, at least three days a week. That can be very, very beneficial. And then, you know, I am an exercise nut. I mean, my daughter makes fun of me. She said, "Dad, I just didn't get your gene for the gym. I just can't do it. I just can't." And you know, there are people wired for it and people not. I'm every single day, five days a week for the past 52 years, I have been in the gym. And it's just, you know, it's like me brushing my teeth and I'm going to go to the gym. It's the same thing. But I know people are not all wired like that. So those who just can do the very best they can, but they can't do it at that level, 
we, we can add AMPK to their supplement protocol and or some of that time restricted eating. So that's one of the buckets of aging. Um, what would be next? Oh, uh, let's start. Oh, how about uh, senescent cells? Oh, let's loves, talk about yes, those. Yes, <laughs> I love that concept because it makes such sense. Even to a non-scientist, it does. Yes. Uh, so senescent cells. Um, so how it kind of works is um, every time our cells divide, we lose a little bit of that telomere length. You, we, mm-hmm. you know, most of us are kind of familiar with that. Um, so when the cell reaches the end of its lifespan, when the telomeres are super short mm-hmm. and it can't divide anymore, what ends up happening is the body then induces that process called apoptosis, mm-hmm. kind of moves. Uh, it's programmed cellular death is sometimes what it's referred to. Is It just removes like damaged cells that are no longer functional, trying mm-hmm. to make room for healthy cell division to kind mm-hmm. of fill in the gaps. Kind of, I, I kind of think about it as real estate. You know, it's prime property there that if, um, you know, if a, a cell has reached the end of its lifespan, we need to move it out so we can fill it in uh, with some healthier cells. Mm-hmm. Um, but if that cell does not apoptose. Which means naturally die. Yeah. Okay. If it's not cleared out, what happens? Because it's it's no longer dividing. It's, mm-hmm. it's no longer, you know, actually being functional in the tissue. And this is what we call a senescent cell. Mm -hmm. And because it's really technically not really alive anymore and it's not really dead because it hasn't been cleared out, Mm -hmm. uh, it's also been referred to as a zombie cell. Mm. Oh, never heard that. (laughs) Oh, yeah. uh, I've seen that in the literature. Um, So and and actually it's a pretty good analogy because it's really not doing much help for the tissue. It's actually getting in the way and creating a lot of inflammation. And there, and it gets in the way because uh, if it wasn't there, then a newer, fresher, younger cell would replace it, right? Correct. Okay. Yes. In fact, this is one of the mechanisms of our organs aging. Mm-hmm. Um, now, a few senescent cells here and there, probably not going to create too much mm-hmm. problem for our tissues, like for example, like our kidneys or our heart, because you know, senescent cells, they can accumulate anywhere. But when they start to you know, pop up here and there and there and there, and next thing you know, we've mm-hmm. got this huge accumulation of senescent cells that can interfere with organ function. Makes total sense. So what do we do about yeah. that? So there's a couple different nutrients also that can <clears throat> help to you know, stimulate that apoptosis, kind of that mm-hmm. clearing. Um, so probably the most potent nutrient is physetin. Uh, which is found in strawberries. Mm -hmm. Uh, It is currently what's found in the literature. It is the most potent senolytic. And what do we mean by senolytic is seno would be senescent cells. Lytic means destroying, getting rid of, lysing it, Mm -hmm. getting it out of there. So uh, physetin, number one. Fisetin. I take fisetin every day. Of course, there people who really know me are saying, well, of course you do, Ed. You take everything. Oh. <laughs> no, I don't take everything. But I w- interviewed a guy from um, New Zealand. He was a pharmacist about a, probably a year ago. And we we posted it, I think, on Nutrition World's site. And it, the first time I ever heard that word was from him. He, I, 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 he had a book called The Eight Pillars of Aging or something like that. I was reading. I was like, what is this word? I didn't even know how to pronounce it. And, and uh uh, but since that day, I have been so sold on the premise and, and polo- philosophy of how this compound works, because it, again, makes total sense. I mean, skeptics will say, well, you know, I want to see, you know, 3000 studies on it. I'm sorry, I'm 65 years old. I don't have time to wait to 85 to get an absolute proof, because the one thing I know is it's safe. One, we have to make sure that these things are safe. We're not going to deal with anti-aging drugs and nutrients that could potentially kill us. That makes no sense at all. Fisetin or Fisetin, first off? I've heard it pronounced both, both ways. ways. Okay. Yep. And I'm doing double dosing because I don't want these senile cells to remain in my body. It'd be like if my tires were worn out on my car and I have no tread left, I can't put new ones on until I get the old ones off. So that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to get some of these old cells out, especially in the organs, because dysfunctional uh, organs are going to create a havoc. Havoc. So uh, Fisetin, Fisetin, I, and, and of course, strawberries... We still, I'm still value foods greatly. The problem is strawberries are still on the dirty dozen left list of all the pesticides. One of the heaviest sprayed and you can't wash it off. And there's nothing you can do about it except by organic. 
Wonderful. You don't want to take the product? Well, try to get organic or strawberries and eat a good number because it's going to take a good number, isn't it? Yes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but it still adds to the mix. Yes. So uh, Fisetin is is one of those supplements that I will stay with based on already the current research that seems to be very, very uh, uh, dominant about its mechanism of action because that is replacing old cells is like replacing the tires in your car. We got to do it. And ex- I mean, what age do people, would they probably want to start considering some of these things. Actually, that, that kind of number is uh, usually 40. 40. That's Once what we I hit guess. 40, things, yeah, uh-huh. that's when we start to notice yeah. <laughs> changes. <laughs> well, I talk about the fact that I think Mother Nature has put together our circuitry for the main purpose of procreation, which is, of course, having babies. And we can, they, Mother Nature kind of discards us after that point in time. So we have to step up to the plate and do more things that we didn't have to do before 40. Because we had these protective mechanisms because nature protected us to have more babies so we can continue the species. Uh, it doesn't really care if it's 40. So that's why I'm on the game plan of all the, the right things and still enjoying life. I will not live in a cave and I will not live in fear. I just know that doing the best I can is the best I can. So, OK, we've covered those two. What would be next? Well, actually, another nutrient uh, that actually starts to deplete when we start to hit 40 mm-hmm. is NAD. Mm, my favorite yes. is NAD. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so um, it's kind of interesting. Uh, when I was in school um, learning uh, medical biochemistry, mm-hmm. NAD seemed to be everywhere. Oh, really? And it didn't dawn on me, wow, you know, this is really important <laughs> until I was uh, looking into, you know, uh, you know, healthy aging, uh-huh. longevity, when, you know, looking at the research and saying, wow, you know, it, it, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. It's involved in so many different chemical processes. I mean, it's actually involved in every single process for making energy. So whether you're eating fat or carbohydrates, um, either way, you need NAD to create energy out of that. I love it. And and we'll talk about it. And p- people listening, this is not NAC, which has become very popular for lung health. And of course, the, all the different infections going around. Uh, I'm a huge believer in NAC's benefit too, but it's not an anti-aging. NAD, which has some cousins to it, MNM and other ones, but NAD itself... Um, is going to protect the mitochondrial function. Is that part of it? When the mitochondria is a source of the biggest probably source of fast aging when we damage this part of our cell, which is the energy production part of a cell. So now I know that can we eat foods that increase NAD or do we just really have to supplement? Of course, I'm supplementing again with NAD because it's too valid to ignore. Uh, It's very difficult to uh, get pre- um precursors, like direct precursors to making NAD from food. Mm -hmm. Um, So really kind of what it starts off now, this is not a direct precursor, but the very beginning is actually niacin. Yes, I forgot about that. Yep. But it takes multiple steps Mm. to to get to NAD itself. Mm -hmm. So what we can do in terms of like for example, like oral supplementation would be like taking nicotinamide riboside, which is actually two steps away from making NAD rather than the multiple steps from uh, the niacin. Um, So nicotinamide riboside, that um, uh, we can actually get it from like um, from uh, dairy Mm -hmm. products, um, but in small quantities, just micro doses. Well, a question I think some people may have is, you know, someone says, I have high cholesterol, what can I do for it? And uh, again, you know, we're not treating medical conditions, but we want to empower people with knowledge. Okay. We say, well, you could do uh, Amla, which I love, uh, and we could do, let's say, ready to rice. Well, they go get paperwork and they say, okay, look how much I've improved. What? There's not really a a definite way to look at this aging with blood testing, is it? Or is there? uh, That one's tricky uh, because there really isn't like one biomarker that's going to you know, tell you mm-hmm. your, you know, kind of where you're going in terms of aging. So we have to go some of this with the faith of the the, the science, the faith of the science that is still limited at this point. But again, we know because of the, the depth of studies like the mole rat and the regular rat and all of these other studies with NAD, that if this is the mechanism of aging and these things are safe, I'm a gambler. I used to love to go to Vegas. Well, I'm going to gamble on these supplements because one is I know they're safe. They're not terribly expensive. What do I have to lose? And I can add a few more pills and maybe 
And again, I will say this constantly. I'm not looking to live 90 years old. I want quality of life. I want to go to bed uh, well and wake up dead. That's my that's my philosophy. Go to bed well and wake up dead. Of course, that's everyone's dream. But, you know, I don't want that last 12 years of just decrepit health and, and just struggling and always having people take care of me. That's my goal. And I think most people listening who are past 45, they would have similar goals. So putting together a toolkit, a plan with not only these things we're talking about, but of course, you know, the exercise and and the right foods and the blank, blank, blank. And of course, that's one thing we do here is try to empower people with knowledge. And I always I used to say all the time and, and uh, I separate the world in two classes of people, learners and non-learners. I'm sorry, people, if you're a non-learner, And you're in this world, which is pretty darn toxic. You're going to age probably really fast unless you are that one and maybe 5,000 people who genetically have some miraculous genetic structure that they can do everything wrong and still live a long time. Most of us aren't like that. I'm not going to take a chance. I am. So uh, I'm adding the things we're talking about and have added those. So we've got three options now for people. And all three of those work on different mechanisms, don't they? They sure do. So if someone only did these three things, you've got three of the buckets of aging that you're actually filling so that we hope to slow things down. And again, we just, you just said, you know, you can't define this with a really functional blood test. And that makes people in the the real black and white science community kind of question things because they want that accountability feedback, but we can't really see it. And we're not going to see it for some time. You know, long ago, I heard someone saying, I just really resonated with me. What uh, if I and I've said this to people, what if I gave you a pill that would make you age, make you go younger one day for every day you took it? How long would it be before you felt it? That pretty much hit me hard because, you know what, if it was actually making me one day younger, it would be several years before I would say I felt it. So I have to trust that this is going to help slow down aging because we're, I'm not going back a day younger every day I take it. I just want to slow it down. I want to be 70, but more like 50. That's what I, I feel like now. I'm 65 and I actually feel like I'm 40. I do most of the time. I get a little hobble hip, but other than that, I'm feeling really, really, really good. And it's because of nutrients and diet. It just is. It's not by luck. So there's three things. Is there anything else uh, supplementally that would be very important for people? Oh, the, if, if you can do three, uh, you're working on three different things, mm-hmm. uh, you're you're really covering your basis. Yeah. But yeah, of, of course, there, you know, in the big scheme of things, if you're working on these Uh, kind of longevity pathways, you may not necessarily get a lot of benefit if you're not taking care of just your baseline health. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and this is where, you know, like the lab testing really comes into play, keeping like testing your insulin, mm-hmm. but it, it's not often tested, which no, kind of it's not. boggles me because, uh, you know, the higher the insulin level, the more mm-hmm. problematic it really is uh, versus just looking at glucose alone. Right. Um, and then, uh, of course, keeping your blood pressure under control, mm-hmm. looking at, you know, making sure your lipids are under control. So, I mean, we want to make sure that your biomarkers for just overall health are nice and in balance, even maybe doing some hormone testing, neurotransmitter mm-hmm. testing, some of these more innovative tests as well. Um, currently, NAD testing is only available for research, but hopefully, I'm keeping my fingers oh. crossed that it may be commercially available, hopefully cool. in the next maybe couple of years, because uh, that would be great yes, to be able yes, to yes. monitor that. Yeah. Ex- that would help me, help everyone know the dosing, it, it, how, you know, th- how much is really right. Exactly. And if I'm low, like I, like I start checking um, uh, pregnenolone, you know, it's the kind of like the grandmother of kind of hormones. Mine was pathetically low. How would I have known that if I didn't check it? And so, you know, I supplement with a little bit, just bring it back to average and uh, all these little pieces to the puzzle. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like I use the analogy of an orchestra. If you if you had an orchestra with 500 musicians in it and the music was simply not in tune and had really let not much beauty to it anymore, you'd have to go in and really evaluate many of these musicians. You wouldn't go in and find one person screwing the music up. And that's with aging. We have to look at these different components in order to create the beautiful music of, of chemistry that slows aging down. Uh, and we all know people who have aged very gracefully and part of that can be luck and part of it's genetics. But uh, most of the time, it is going to take effort for most of us. We are not blessed with that that halo of, 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 of being able to detoxify everything and have slow damages to mitochondrial function. And again, I don't want to take the chance on it because by the time that there are windows of opportunity that we lose if we wait too long. Absolutely. So. Yeah, very well said. <laughs> 
And uh, oh, just on a, a note mm-hmm. of senescent cells, um, again, not a commercially available mm-hmm. you know, test to say, oh, you have this many senescent cells. Yeah. But one thing that we can do um, is, you know, kind of monitor these basic numbers. Like, for example, the kidney function tests. Oh, yeah. You know, looking at like GFR, yes. very easy test to do, um, you know, monitoring to see, OK, how is our kidney filtration doing? Is it is it improving? Because if there's a lot of senescent cell accumulation, probably going to interfere with filtration. So if we can see these like maybe small changes, yes. like you said, you know, healthier that. One day healthier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. you know, uh, we do a tremendous amount of blood testing through an independent lab at uh, Nutrition World. Uh, they're here uh, one day a week. And looking at the, I'm so glad you said that because it's it's so blatantly clear when you look at that kind of blood work between a 20-year-old, a 40-year-old, a 60-year-old, and an 80-year-old normally. But I am so blessed to be able to have clients that some people – have done everything the right way. And I can look at that 72 year old and say, as I did just yesterday, you have a kidney function of a 21 year old. You have a liver function of a 21 year old. That shows that they're on an anti-aging program, whether they know it or not, doesn't it? Because your GFR, I mean, most people, uh, you know, it, I, I kind of say it kind of you know, like a lot of 60 year olds have a GFR of 60. It's not the best number because young people have it at 120. It's the filtration rate of your kidney. I'm, I'm going to really take that to heart because that would be at this point the most, it's not direct, but it's an indirect evaluation of, of damage and aging that's happening to the body, isn't it? Absolutely. So that's fantastic. And, you know, Albert Einstein, I, and it's not all about nutrition because there's other parts to aging, which is our emotional and spirit part of us. And he said, uh, Albert Einstein said, do not grow old no matter how long you live. Never cease to stand like curious children before the great mystery from which we are born. So there's a whole bunch of other stuff we need to embrace because I can tell you with my experience, and I think yours too, people who live under m- extreme umbrellas of fear, which we have more now than we've ever had in the in history of mankind, and those that are not happy and don't have music in their heart, they can still live a long time, but it's generally going to take away their lifespan. If not, it certainly takes away the music in their heart. So we have to put together many multiple plans. And I so appreciate you coming all the way from out of town and traveling up here, flying up here to be with us at Nutrition World's podcast. This is so informative and it's it's firing me up even more for the rest of my journey, which is hoping to educate myself. Yes, I'm selfish because I want to slow my aging, but at the same time, I'm an educator and I'm passionate to help other people. So thank you, Dr. Pavey, for being here at Nutrition World's podcast. Oh, thank you. Thank you.